Good evening. Firing Line shifts its venue to Malacanang Palace tonight for an interview with President Fidel V. Ramos. It will mark the first time the President appears on a TV talk show since the drama of floor contemplation erupted on the national stage. Floor was buried in San Pablo, Laguna yesterday in emotional and flag-festooned rites that approximated the burial of a national heroine. The whole country, it seems, is in some kind of emotional upheaval. This is because the death of Floor has spotlighted the plight of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of impoverished Filipinos who have left the Philippines to seek work abroad. This emotional upheaval has been hardest on Singapore, but it has not spared the Philippine government. The popular perception is that our overseas contract workers have been largely left to their fate despite stories of abuse, oppression, torture, and rape. Anyway, our interview with President Fidel V. Ramos tonight will strongly emphasize the government's position on the continuing drama of floor contemplation and the OCWs. My co-host tonight is Nelson Navarro of the Manila Standard, who I am sure was either glued to the TV screen yesterday or must have gone to San Pablo Laguna to cover. Okay. Uh, Nelson, how did you have a flair for drama? <laughs> how did that funeral affect you? Well, it came across to me, and I suppose to millions of other people, uh, that it was another Nino Aquino occasion, uh -huh. except that uh, we were honoring a, a woman of very humble origins, and I think that made for the drama even more compelling. Uh, I think the administration was very lucky in that the Contemplation family and their supporters did not do did not do three things. Number one, they did not parade the body around Manila when mm -hmm. it arrived. Number two, they kept the body in San Pablo for, for a week-long uh, wake. And number three, they did not take the body to Manila for, its, uh, for the funeral. Because I think had they done that, this crisis would have escalated to a boiling point. So I think the administration basically bought time. But the administration is still, uh, the, the ball is still in their court. And, and number it, four, the rights were simple. Simple, yeah. Very unelaborate. Uh, it was non-agitational. Uh, no, there was no presence of any big shot, of anybody yes. you see, who was titled, who mm -hmm. had any kind of pedigree. In other words, it was a funeral of mm -hmm. the poor, the humble, and those who felt yeah. that they were, because they were poor, they have been oppressed. And that said, Jerry... And uh, that ends our intro for tonight, while we wait for the arrival on stage of our President, His Excellency, President Fidel V. Ramos. Welcome to Firing Line, Mr. President. It is indeed a pleasure to have you aboard. Once again, you have been here four times, if I'm not mistaken, or even five times. And so, without much further ado, Nelson and myself would like to go to the Firing Line, and I will ask the first question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> salamat. Uh, give me a chance to respond, and uh, thank you also for this opportunity to uh, be on your very prestigious program, uh, Teddy and Nelson. Salamat po. Mr. President, the criticism has been made in many sectors of media that your reaction or your response has been too little and too late and that you set up the Gankaiko Commission which will take some time as a matter of fact to make its recommendations and that until now you have not cut off any heads in the cabinet which they expect you to do. How do you react to that Mr. President? Well, you know Teddy, mm -hmm. you must understand that uh, this problem is at three levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, uh, this is at the domestic level or the internal audience of the Filipino people within the Philippines. And uh, that has a very uh, wide variety of uh, concerns in itself, which we are addressing. Secondly, we have uh, the level of our bilateral relations with Singapore. We are also addressing that as firmly and uh, in as a balanced way as we can do it. 
And then the third audience, and uh, this is just as important as the two others, is the international audience uh, beyond Singapore and the Philippines, but which uh, has to do with uh, our economic growth, our social reforms, our uh, advocacy of uh, the protection of our human resources, which we are sharing with the world. I so, think and so uh, it's not just cutting of heads that is involved here. Although we will come to that, but uh, let us uh, do things uh, in the proper way. Did you, okay, say, yun? did you say, Mr. President, that you would Hindi, come? Ko muna, okay, oh, ba, eh, naman, <laughs> so, <laughs> ng mga tao oh. na magkakaroon ng mga ulo oh, yeah. na mawawala. Pero ako. alam mo, Teddy, uh -huh. uh, let us not uh, cut off uh, our hands and heads and uh -huh. feet and uh, hurt the entire body. In which case, eh, masasak na talaga yung buong uh, mamamayang Pilipino who may not uh, be really as deeply involved as you or Nelson or many others. But as I said in the beginning, we are very deeply concerned about all of the issues at the three levels. Let, okay, me, say, yeah? let me understand it clearly, Mr. <laughs> President. In other words, uh, oh. it has been rolling in your mind that inevitably or probably you might have to resort to the cutting of heads. Yes, uh, I said so in the uh, beginning when we made our statement upon the uh, constitution of the Gangkaiko Commission. And uh, I would like you to know that uh, this goes well back into the early days of my administration where we were already looking at the entire horizon of the policies pertaining to the protection of uh, our uh, migrant workers out there. Uh, and that started with wanting to uh, having uh, bilateral uh, agreements on uh, labor on employment and the rights and privileges of our overseas workers. At meron rin tayong nagawa tungkol dyan eh. Like uh, bilateral agreements with some uh, Middle, Middle East countries, also Hong Kong. And we have no more problems uh, with those countries in so far as the overall policies are concerned. Nelson, but pardon me, Mr. Yeah. President, if I must point out to you that it took you at least 72, perhaps 96 hours to regain some kind of initiative on this issue because you came back from your 12-day trip to the uh, to Europe and the Middle East and when you came to, to this country your arrival statement made absolutely no mention of the floor contemplation incident as if it never it never happened and that's why well, there was a the hand, firestorm. Nelson, pwede bang uh, you, you read uh, our statements from this office a little more carefully because these are available naman uh, to media Especially uh, leaders of media like you, no? No, Mr. President, I was watching your arrival statement. No, no, no. You're talking about Cebu. so many hours before, no? Because uh, <clears throat> when President Ong Teng Chong came, and he came uh, the middle of February, previous to that, on the 18th of January, I had already dispatched a letter to him asking for a stay of execution. Yan ay preparasyon para sa bisita ng isang... Uh, Eh, oh, yung pinakamataas na official na Singapore. Now, and so he came. Now, on the 15th of February, when we parted from each other, uh, there at the Manila Hotel, he was on his way to Baguio to uh, do the rest of his itinerary. nag ako ng aid memoir sa kanya, reminding him that we had uh, written him a letter. Here was the very serious case of a country woman is scheduled for execution. And then, uh, when I was in Turkey and then in Copenhagen, on the 11th of March, I sent that second letter, second formal letter, signed letter, it wasn't an aid memoir anymore, to uh, the same president, asking again for this uh, stay so that the case could be reviewed in view of the fact that two witnesses had come uh, forward, Frinilla and Parumog. That's on the record. Yeah. But now, we made a statement on the 16th of March from where I was in Europe. Now, in regard to my arrival statement, that must be taken together with my other statements because 
You may not know it because you were not there, Nelson. We had a mass early morning of the 18th at the uh, Mactan Air Base Chapel. At doon ko sinabi uli yung uh, pakikiramay, pakikisama, uh, uh, pakikidalamhati with the contemplation family. Uh, that was not in a written speech, but I said it out of the depths of my heart. And I also mentioned that Mrs. Ramos was going to be sent uh, later that morning to uh, be there at the airport when uh, the remains of Flor would arrive. And I said it again where I had to be that morning, which was in Iloilo during the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Panay. And uh, here, probably had about 10,000 people also waiting. So. Uh, Let's put these things in the proper place instead of accusing your president of insensitivity just because you did not have all of the information. No, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, we, we, uh, Nelson, uh, uh, we, we just have I to hope we are not here to discuss that particular bring, point alone for your entire we have to, program. No? We have to pause for a brief break, <laughs> okay. and I've been receiving signals repeatedly to close it for some time. So stay with us. It's okay. very interesting. Thank you. We do understand what you're saying and what you're explaining, but nevertheless, there is a prairie fire of protest and even outrage because of the death verdict and uh, the eventual burial of Flor Contemplacion. And uh, somehow, the strongest statement that we have made is that uh, you would sever diplomatic relations with Singapore if it should be proven that law contemplation is innocent. Some people say that that was self-serving because in any court of law outside of in Singapore, she can never be proven innocent. How do you react to that, Mr. President? Well, uh, that's really just mm -hmm. your opinion, Teddy, and maybe the opinion of a limited number of people because I've heard also opinion to the contrary in that uh, the Gankaiko Commission, which consists of a prestigious broad section of our society, including uh, the OCWs and our uh, common people, the public at large. Uh, the other opinion is that such a commission must really get to the truth of the matter. And then uh, when that is determined, and uh, we have uh, asked the commission to submit their findings on this particular aspect of it, not later than 15 days or not later than the 6th of April, then that will be the basis for all the actions that we have to take. Now, uh, I think that uh, it may not be uh, uh, acceptable by you, but I think that's the most reasonable uh, action that can be taken right now. Uh, I am not trying to protect any of those people who work under me. I'm not even trying to protect those people who were there in Singapore before my time who were the ones that first acted on this because you must understand this happened on the 4th of May 1991 and it was another ambassador who was there now we must sort this out so that we know how much uh, that ambassador ambassador Benedicto and his staff should be liable for and then this one uh, ambassador Alicia Ramos and her staff should be liable for the same is true with the foreign minister at the time and the labor minister in this government. So these are some of the things that we are trying to do at this time. Mr. Sí, President. And uh, we yeah. have given the Gagai Commission 15 days to do it now. I don't know whether this is unreasonable or not. You will have to forgive me for yeah. being confused, Mr. President. <laughs> okay. Because... I am not confused. Uh, the me. Philippine yeah. Embassy <laughs> officials in Singapore yeah. and the consulate officials in Singapore insist, to see, that based on the evidence, mm. The pronouncement and the verdict of the guilt, you see, was justifiable. And that never, as a matter of fact, during the questioning, during the contacts with, did she ever plead or did she ever say that she was innocent? 
In other words, she has always claimed that she was guilty. Now, how can we prove that she was innocent? Do we have the kind of evidence, Mr. President, that will prove she was I innocent? I do not know, Teddy. You are a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. Not a lawyer. <laughs> okay, you are a lawyer. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, Mr. President. Okay, none of us are lawyers, but uh, we are all doublers in the law. But I think it's reasonable to believe that uh, we better uh, get as much as possible which constitutes the truth through our best efforts with the Gangkaiko Commission. Since uh, how else will we do it? We cannot uh, insert ourselves there in the High Court of Singapore. Neither can we insert ourselves back into the proceedings that took place. So it is our best effort. But precisely because we have to solve this problem at three levels, not only in terms of the uh, tragedy of floor contemplation, and let's not forget, there was the original victim, who was Del Yamaga, and the four-year-old boy, Huang. Uh, let's uh, give this prestigious body, the, which has the expertise and the, uh, I would say, probity to do all of this, uh, their 15 days. And then we will act from their own. And I will be responsible thereafter for the decisions that will be made by the executive branch. Which would include, if you are convinced that the testimony is uh, convincing, impressive, and irrefutable, you say that if, you see, you would find her innocent, you would severe diplomatic relations with Singapore? Yes, I said that. I even put it in writing, oh, okay. Teddy. Good. So, uh, I don't know why there should be any confusion about Well, we just this. wanted to make sure, Mr. President. Hindi, kasi sana, eh, pamisan-misan, basahin nyo yung mga press statements, uh -huh. press releases, nagkagaling dito. Dahil sa komisan, paglabas na sa periodic yun, eh, meron konting islant na. Mm -hmm. yeah. I suggest you research with the original document. Kaya ako kami nandito ang dalawang. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me put point Pagkatapos up. nito, eh, I'll be happy to let you have all of this. Para okay. naman, eh, we will all be properly informed, you know. Mr. Yeah. President, tatagalugin ko na. Ano no. po kaya namang konklusyon ang pwedeng i ipasampa ng Igang Kaiko Commission? Pag, pag ipinroof nila, pinatutuhanan nila na talagang guilty si contemplation, acceptable ba ito sa mga taong na nagagalit? At paano nyo mapuprove conclusively? Ngayon, kung i-exonerate naman ninyo... Uh, sandali lang, minsan-minsan lang, ano, <laughs> uh, one at a time, no? Eh, I think we should not speculate naman kung ano magiging konklusyon. Kita na natin uh, sa bumbong ang magiging bumbong. Eh, siguro, mag bumbong, siguro let us not have a prejudgment on this. That's a, precisely, we want to get uh, to the bottom of it so that we can proceed from here on in a reasonable way. Dahil sa, we have many things at stake here. Eh. And first of all is our economic growth and our sustained progress. Paano natin matutulungan ang mga pulubi, mga marilita sa ating lipunan if we do not generate the resources to help ourselves? Now, that comes out of uh, investment, uh, internally generated jobs here, livelihood opportunities, and uh, attractiveness and confidence about the Philippines. Yeah. We have attained that during the past two years. Now, let me tell you, we also attained a budget surplus in 1994. Eh, hindi po nangyari yan by magic or by miracle or by wishing. It happened because all of us as a society worked hard to uh, make it happen. Now, we have resources now therefore to invest more into basic needs of the people, uh, social services, including livelihood, including those for the very unskilled in our society. E yan po ang ating uh, uh, pinuporsige na vision for the Philippines. With all due respect, Mr. Yeah. Mr. President, we're in the middle of a, of a political crisis and you're trying to make us uh, go through, uh, to, you're, you're trying to, to behave as if nothing wrong is happening and no, no, you no. can string us through these uh, legal, uh, legal procedures and then the heart back on the accomplice of your accomplishments of your administration. No, that's <laughs> that is not the issue po eh. No, Hindi po yan ang issue, ang kailangan action. That's what well, people are asking for. Action na natin, ha? Uh, Eh, ang gusto nyo action yung we will fire this, we will fire that, we will jail this, we will jail, jail that. Pero per for starters po, bakit hindi nyo i-fire yung mga talagang responsable dyan? You know, like Secretary Romolo and Secretary Confessor, do you honestly think that they can still be effective in their jobs after everything that has happened? Mr. Let's, President, let me ask you that let's question. Let's find out the actions of the ones before them also. Pwede ba? Yeah. Oh, for, the, for starters lang, po. How will we find out about... Uh, what to do with those people. They're really out of the service already. But let us uh, make sure that uh, in correcting a wrong, we are not doing another wrong. 
Because that is double jeopardy, double wrong already. Eh, sinasabi ko lang, eh, April 6 naman eh, ang, uh, kung ano eh, eh, first reporting. Now, we have also issued landmarks for the Gangkaiko Commission because they have a 90-day uh, term as a commission unless they ask for an extension. Sir President, excuse me. Yeah, okay. The signal has come for me to pause for a brief break for the next segment of Pangnan. Please stay with us. It's getting to be more and more and more interesting. Thank you. saying this is a political crisis and in any country and any other society in the world people demand some preliminary strong action to indicate that the government is aware of the intensity of the problem that the, the nation faces and so far your your responses have been very uh, very temporizing and basically stonewalling to use a Nixon administration statement <laughs> I don't know about that <laughs> statement no, but Nelson, no, ito, tayo, no? Pwede ba, no, ha? I know you have a particular bias to fire this and that person, no? To save Nasa your presidency, na, Mr. No? President. No, look, uh, I must save my own presidency, not you. But thank you, you for your advice, no? I'm still the one responsible for delivering this country mm -hmm. into a better condition than when I found it mm -hmm. in 1992, hindi ba? I hope you will grant me that yes. uh, premise, no? And therefore, all my actions, all my programs of government, since day one of this administration. Five programs po yan. Number one, national stability, social cohesion. Number two, economic growth, sustained progress. Number three, restore the power and upgrade the, our uh, infrastructure. Number four, protect the environment, wise our, uh, wisely use our natural resources. Number four, streamline the bureaucracy, including, ito na nga, putting in more efficiency, uh, reducing graft and corrup corruption, fighting crime and decentralizing uh, devolving and we have been doing that now tungkol dito eh, it is a difficult uh, problem for me because as you said uh, there could be a crisis now, there is a crisis Mr. there President. is a crisis perhaps in certain ways but it is not a total national crisis some were saying ayan ang EDSA 2 some were saying ayan ang uh, Ninoy 2. Well, Wedding delayed reaction po. Well, uh, don't you think that I am not concerned about that? It's my neck that's on the line, Nelson. And our neck too, Mr. President. President. No, but uh, later on you will still be around. I may not be anymore. I want to deliver this country precisely to the younger Filipinos like you mm. and uh, others who are around so that it will be in much better shape. At uh, sila naman ay hindi na magkakaroon ng ganitong problema during their time. Mr. President, I'd like to get out of the atmospherics of <laughs> okay. outer crisis. Sige. To delve and put, you see, my, well, not my knife, but my questioning, into the core of the crisis. And the core of the crisis happens to be poverty in the Philippines. That's right. And Let's talk about that. And crushing, grinding, exploitative poverty That's why we have where hundreds of thousands of Filipinos feel compelled to leave the country because they have no future here, they have no jobs, they cannot feed their families, and the only way they can feed their families is to go abroad and seek employment. If, okay. Even if this kind of employment results in so much anguish, so much yes. pain, torture, uh, what you might call exploitation, imprisonment, rape, and so Sige. on and so forth. Okay. That, 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 that is the actual yan. crisis, Mr. President. You know, how, do we, how do I talk about I hope you'll give me time to yes. explain these programs because my programs mm -hmm. are more comprehensive than your questions. Pwede ba? Go ahead, Mr. Okay. President. We'll run out of time. <laughs> Ito. Pagganyan. Okay, eh, mahahabaw ninyo yung oh. question eh. At uh, yung inyong explanation ng naiere, yun ang oh. mga akin at ako yata ang guest ninyo. Sige, ano, sige. Pwede ba? Oh. <laughs> okay. Tungkol sa poverty, what's Philippines 2000 all about? Because some people misunderstand it as a political program of Ramos just for his party, no? Mm. Philippines 2000, early on in this administration, was explained to be... Uh, Two things. First, 
the six-year medium-term development program from 1993 to 1998, and the larger policy environment, which we must put in place so that we can get into the 21st century, the year 2000, and well into the 21st century on a sustainable basis. Yan po ginagawa natin dito. Now, ano ba yung objectives ng uh, six-year medium-term program? Three things. Number one, reduction of poverty from the present level of about 45% at the time. Uh, reduce it by about 20 uh, to 25%. In other words, bring it down to about 30, 25, or 20 percent if we can. Secondly, increase per capita income to 1,000 U.S. dollars. Where were we when we began? 720 U.S. dollars. Where were we end last year? 850 dollars. I think we can achieve 1,000 dollars. Bukod po dyan, meron tayong ginagamit ngayon na measurement called PPP. Yung... Uh, purchasing power parity. Purchasing power uh, parity, which mm. has to do with the cost of living in mm. the country. Mm. At uh, a PPP ng Pilipinas ngayon ay eh, $2,560 US dollars, something mm. like that. Uh, now, I think we are also moving into that. Mm. Now, the third is double-digit growth by 1998. Mm. And with this progression of growth from 2.5 when we came in, mm. maybe less, kasi may negative pa yan eh, to uh, 5.1 and 94, and we are projecting 6.5 and 95, it's doable. If uh, we stay together as a performing national competitive society, eh, yun namang larger policy environment, eh siguro nakakalimutan natin na malaki ang nagawa nitong Ninth Congress together mm -hmm. with the presidency. In the space of 90 days, from uh, 1st December 94 to end February 95, 46 major bills in uh, the economic, in the social, in the electoral, in the administrative or government bureaucratic sectors were put in place. Now, even just five of these would have taken 90 days already. But we did it under this spirit of collaboration and uh, social cohesion that I uh, said uh, in the very beginning. Now, yeah. uh, kaya, ko, mm. let us elect a new Congress that will continue with this mode, with this momentum. Otherwise, hindi makukompleto yung putting in of the structural uh, reforms needed for sustainable development. Alam niyo po ang presidente, Mr. President, okay. ang ating uh, problem ngayon is you're talking about tomorrow and the hereafter while well, the OCWs and those who support them are talking about the here and the now, now. and today. Uh, let me continue, Mr. President. Ang sabi po nila, maganda po ang Philippines 2000. Hindi po nila tinututul, hindi pa nila kinakalaban. Pero ang resulta po raw niyan will be seen in the year 2000. Samantalang ang resulta pa raw ho ng Philippines 2000 as a result of GNP growth of 5.1 in 1994 was real enough. Pero hindi ho raw naman nag-trickle down ah, sa mga okay, okay. maralita, sa mga Pag hirap, sa mga kapaspalan. Natin yan, mayaman pwede, mo lang raw nakikinabang. Pwede, pwede. Pag-usapan natin yan. Nila. No? Relax oh. lang tayo, oh. okay, di ba? Mm. Okay. We just got a letter, for instance, from uh, an association abroad. Di ko na sasabihin, oh. no, kung uh, saan galing ito. Pero sinasabi nila, we want to stay where we are. And uh, we're not about to go home just because uh, you have your difficulties with Singapore. Uh, we are happy in our jobs. We are happy you came to visit us twice already, Mr. President. Walang ibang presidente na nakabisita sa amin at nakiusap sa amin na ganyan katindi. Because you even listen to our uh, problems uh, individually. I have done that, not just in one country, Teddy. Ikalawa po, ito lang ang administrasyon na tumawag uh, pansin sa mga ating kakapitbansa. In ASEAN, in APEC, 18 countries po yung APEC. Ang sinabi namin, tangkilikin natin ang mga labor component in production. Eh, kami mga Pilipino nagbigay ng napakalawak na tulong sa inyong lahat. I'm talking about APEC. So why don't we, as we share these human resources with you, also protect and respect these human resources? Because uh, you are guaranteeing the financial component. You are guaranteeing the technology transfer and the high-tech aspect of it. Why don't you guarantee the human factor uh, in uh, production. Dahil sa kahit na anumang kapital dyan o high-tech dyan, kung wala yung human hands, skilled labor na gumagawa, tumutulong, 
Eh, walang product. Kaya Ayan po ang aming posisyon, ha? From day one of this administration. Ngayon, eh, hindi naman po. tama kung sinasabi ninyong wala kami ginawa rito sa administration na ito. Dahil sa iyong Hong Kong na lang, ano? Mm. We have 120,000 there. We uh, not only were able to forge a bilateral employers, employee, uh, labor arrangement, we were also able to work out an extradition treaty so that uh, magpalitan ng mga criminals, ano? We were able to see that uh, the Hong Kong government charged erring employees against our uh, household workers. Sir President, if you don't mind, okay. we'll pause Sige. for another break. Stay with us. Sige, okay. Welcome back, Mr. President. Salamat you know, Mr. Salamat. President, uh, you have never been accused of lack of good intentions. Thank you very much. You know, what you have been accused of is moving too slowly, far too slowly. Ito na lang pong case ng OCW nito, no? Magaling yung programa nyo sa para OCW. Pero bakit napako? Bakit nabitay si Flor Contemplacion? Obviously, ang problema ng ito, mahaba yung pinagbulan. Uh, sandali lang, ha, Nelson. No? Do not ask me the question. Hindi ko masasagot yan, no? Sagot yung minuta ka Singapore. Kung bakit siya nabitay? I, I have, I have uh, even written two letters, as I mentioned earlier, to the President of Singapore. Meron pang isang Ed Memoir. Pagkatapos, eh, siyempre, meron yung mga eh, downstream messages ang gagaling sa ating mga ministers and ambassadors. Pero, Obviously po, ito, binali wala ang inyong request. Bakit? Friend ba natin ang Singapore? Bakit pa tayo nasa ASEAN? Hindi, sa Danilang Nelson, ano? Eh, we were addressing the problem of poverty a while ago, no? Mm -hmm. Pero tungkol dyan sa nasabi mo, eh, hindi ko na masagot yung uh, ginagawa ng isang bansa. In the same way that Prime Minister Go Chok Tong said in his statement yesterday, that he cannot be responsible uh, for what is happening in the Philippines, especially in regard to the reactions of the people. He's not in control of that. Now, but talking about poverty, ito, Teddy, no? Mm -hmm. Eh, sana i-report natin ito, no? Because in our uh, annual report on the economic performance, December 1994, ito po ang nature of employment in the Philippines now. We have an 8.8% unemployment rate. Tumaas po over with, one year. with a uh, underemployment rate. Now, tumaas, bakit? Ito, pag-aralan natin ito. We lost 63% in terms of growth rate in the agricultural sector. Diyan po ang bumaba ang employment. But we increased by 839% in industry with 222% in the manufacturing sector of industry and 21.3% increase in services. Ano pong gusto sabihin nito? We are losing agricultural and rural farm jobs, correct? And that's the way it should be for us to be able to generate more jobs which are really found in the factory. You cannot find jobs anymore in the farm because the land is becoming smaller and small, smaller per capita. But what does an industrial job mean? Number one, you're probably working eight hours a day. Not interminably as you do mm -hmm. in the farm. Number two, maybe 40 hours a week. Number three, maybe you're getting overtime uh, and double time if you're working on Sundays. Maybe you're covered by a CBA, mm -hmm. a collective bargaining agreement, which is protection of some kind for the workers. And then maybe you're getting 15 days vacation leave, maybe you're getting 15 days sick leave. Pero, this is important uh -huh. to the women, no? Mm -hmm. And you are probably part of a bigger cooperative, association, uh, uh, federation, etc., etc. And so I think that uh, it's uh, well for us to lose more jobs in the rural, in the uh, agricultural sector and have a gain in the industrial sector. Because many of these jobs anyway, are there in the countryside now, with uh, 15 growth centers. Pero Mr. President, yeah. ang mga drama po are very infrequently based on facts, figures, and statistics. No? 
They're on based on events. Mahosan. They're based on the surge of a particular event. Perception. At ang kanilang uh, damdamin ngayon, eh, ang pagtitingin daw ng mga mayaman, ang mga powerful, ang mga nasa gobyerno, ang mga rich businessmen, eh, they look down on these domestic helpers. Ang tawag ng mga achay lang naman yan. Bakit namin yeah. pagbibigyan ng uh, kuwan? Okay, sandali lang. Ano, <laughs> may, mayroong attitude to. Ang ating mga tinatawag na we belong to the upper classes na binabaliwala ang mga achay. Hindi ba? Uh, eh, that's uh, your term, no? I, nev I never I used that using term. the term. Yeah, the okay. Uh, Now, uh, I think you should interview more people. Number one, who belong to the hundreds of thousands out there abroad who are satisfied with their uh, present status and their jobs. But since you cannot go out there, why don't you interview their families here? In Bulacan, in Pangasinan, in Laguna. Because uh, their families want them to stay where they are so that they can continue to uh, send the additional income. Number three, uh, I don't think that you can generate jobs by just getting angry or uh, investing in perceptions. Even that is very important. Hindi, po, hindi ko po ini-small yan, ano? But the reality out there, Nelson and Teddy, is you must have resources to create jobs. It takes 70,000 pesos to create uh, a small job in the province. And it uh, takes 250,000 pesos to create one job in a factory that is producing uh, items for export. Yan ang reality niyan. Now, saan tayo kukuha niyan? Kung hmm. hindi tayo nagsubikap through our own efforts initially, and then also invite investors here. Hmm. Ang sinasabi ko rito, eh, nagawa na natin yan eh, during the last two years. May growth pattern na tayo. Our investments grew by uh, 330% if we're looking at the registrations in the BOI. Of course, that takes about six months to 12 months to be put on the ground. But we are not seeing naman investors pulling out. Mm. Ang nagpo-pull out po, yung mga naglagay ng equity investment in the stock market. Pero yung sa direct investments, eh ba, padagdag ng padagdag yan eh. Mr. President, yung pong yeah. sinasabi niyo, tumpak ho yun. Wala ko kami okay. tutul sa sinasabi niyo. Pero hindi, oh, you tell oh, me, oh. are you going to create jobs just by your own emotions? Or do you need pesos to put on the ground? Hindi ho niyo namang kasalanan na itong mga hundreds of thousands, <laughs> uh, they came before you, Mr. President. No, and then, sila, pa, I am doing oh, what, uh, oh. Sundi. Kami ba yung nakapasyal na sa Smoky Mountain? Yeah. Minsan, ho? Oh. Kailan? Oh. Some time ago. Matagal na ho? Okay, oh. you better go there again because uh, hmm. what is happening there, and I'm talking about when I was there, February uh, 21st or 22nd, hmm. just before the EDSA anniversary, no? I hope you're seeing that, number one, garbage dumping has stopped. Number two, that the 26,000 people there have been organized to help themselves, not just through livelihood, livelihood, mm -hmm. but also for export. Ginagawa na po nila yan. Number three, they put out their own SM department store using uh, an old warehouse of the public works. Yung SM, hindi Shumart po yan. Smoky Mountain yan. Mm -hmm. Pero they are moving. They are uh, turning over. Uh, income investment and uh, sales. No? Uh, meron pong uh, temporary housing na dyan. By July, a few months from now, tapos na yung uh, units for 3,000 uh, families. The temporary is so that we can remove them from where they are now. And then we will make that Smoky Mountain itself disappear mm -hmm. by way of uh, a little uh, filling up of the land because we are reclaiming about 179 hectares in the North Harbor area. And then also the sale of some of that compost. And eventually also power generation of from 30 to 60 megawatts. That's about a 50 million uh, US dollar investment. Now, meron pong isang developer dyan who is doing this on a BOT basis. Uh, without any government investment in that project itself, although we are doing the roads, R10, which is North Bay Boulevard that runs through uh, Uh, the Smoky Mountain area. Mr. President, we'll okay, have to stop okay. you again okay, okay. and pause for another break. We have a very interesting interview with the President of the Republic of the Philippines. Stay with us.
nagagahol po tayo sa panahon. Okay. Kaya po ang uh, ide-devote natin dito sa last segment. Eh, siguro, pwede tayong pagbigyan ng channel chef. Then, <laughs> 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 ang uh, gusto ko namin ngayon, mag-concentrate. Ito pong impact, ito pong epekto, ito pong repercussions ng drama ni Flor Contemplation. Na nalalaman na natin na napakaraming criticisms, outrage, there are popular protests almost everywhere. What impact will this have on the campaign for the May 8 elections? And more specifically, what repercussions will it have on the senatorial elections? Meron po nagsasabi, hindi na raw pwede ho yung 12-0, mas kina 11-1, mas kina 10-2. Ang meron nagsasabi po, ang pinakamagaling daw na makukuha nyo, 7-5, baka 6-6 daw ho mangyayari. Well, alam mo naman, Teddy, ano ha? Pagka isang partido yung nagsabi ng 12-0 or total victory, oh, eh, talagang yun. ganyan yan. Oh. Ganyan ang kultura natin. Whether it is uh, elections, uh, DC Games, or Olympics, or just playing a basketball mm -hmm. game. Ganyan talaga. Sa atin, atin lang po, Mr. Ngayon, President. Ano ito, talaga? Hindi, ito, sabihin ko sa inyo, <laughs> atin, atin kung bakit tayo bumuo ng isang koalisyon with the laban for the senatorial ticket yan ang aking bottom line eh. Hmm. Pinaliwanag ko yan nung araw pa. And that is, if you read our agreement with the LDP, what we are talking about, ni hindi namin pinag-usapan yung local until later eh. Why do I want a big majority in the Senate? Dahil sa marami pa tayong uh, itatatag na mahalagang batas. And it is the Senate really that holds the key here. Because ako naman ay komportable sa house eh, mm. without minimizing that importance. Mm. And in addition to that, the Senate has the uh, treaty ratifying power in our government under the Constitution. And therefore, uh, in the 10th Congress, I must have about, or at least, 16 senators supporting the government. Uh, on issues where uh, treaty uh, or international agreement ratification is needed. On all other matters, well, a simple majority is enough. Uh, and so uh, I would be comfortable with 16 supportive members of the Senate. 16? Yes. Okay. Ngayon, six. Kaya, I said, one six. One six, two mm. thirds. Kaya Including ako, those that are already there. Yes, yeah, yeah. in the 10th uh, Congress. Mm. Bago na yan, mm. by July 1st. Kaya ako sinasabi naman na eh, if we can get more, why not? Let's mm -hmm. go for it now. That's the first and maybe the most important bottom line. The second is, let's win it big also in the gubernatorial, city mayor, municipal contest. Why? Because as chief of the executive branch, I need people to do the job, mm -hmm. to execute the policies and the laws. So, that's the way I look at it. The third bottom line is, although I'm not minimizing is, let us have also in the House of Representatives a workable majority. Mm -hmm. Now, that's it now. Uh, I hope uh, when I say 12-0, as some have reported, that mm -hmm. uh, it is intended to gain 12-0 by hook or by crook. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not like that. And uh, I went into this presidency, and this is my first, only, and final political office Sir. with uh, very mm. little you know so I know how it is to be an underdog now uh, having said all of that let us look at the record of some of those candidates no mm. in these 46 major bills that I mentioned on the economic the social the electoral administrative and the government organization who helped and who did not help ang mga tumulong sa akin yung mga wala sa partido ko but yet, there were people, just because they were in the opposition, who just consistently opposed everything that we laid on the table of Congress for enactment into law. Mm -hmm. Now, in spite of the fact that many of these proposals came from the bottom, yung sinasabi mo ang kailangan magluto tayo ng bibingka. The Filipino way, may apoy sa ilalim. The people's... Uh, Concerns at may apoy din si Baba o policy direction and allocation of resources. Now, having said that, uh, let's look now at the record of some of these senators. Eh, puro opposition, puro opposition na lamang eh. 
wala na i-contribute dito sa 46 major bills. Kaya Mr. kaya ako pinupuri uh -huh. yung mga nasa Night Congress na tumulong dyan. Uh, most of whom are re-electionists in this uh, common ticket of the Lakas and the uh, Laban. Uh -huh. Now, meron din mga special laws. Ano? For instance, you are got WTO. Uh, may mga kandidato uh, representing the opposition that did nothing but to oppose this from beginning to end, including during uh, the voting day, and they explained Mario, their positions. Mario, baka makapasok, Mr. President? Oh, yeah, please, meron ako sinabi, kayo, host dito. Mario, mayroon niya sinabi niya ang pagluluto ng pitingka, yun ang oh, importante. Oh. Pero meron ang mga obserbasyon na habang lumuluto kayo ng pitingka, lalo lang kayong lumalapit sa mga traditional politicians at uh, parang you have uh, sinatawag nila you have made common cause with them you have gone to bed with them and that consequent to which you have forgotten your promises of uh, okay. people power and people empowerment okay. na naging track we will go to that uh, Teddy oh, no? you oh. remind me where I failed on my commitments mm. during the 1992 campaign mm. but let me tell you that uh, if I try to win the support of uh, even the opposition and we attain something good for the people. Is that uh, being a trapo? I don't think so. It is creative, productive, coalitioning, mm -hmm. collaboration, cooperation. Yun na nga yung teamwork na sinasabi natin eh. Hindi aangat ang ating mahal na ilang bayang Pilipinas kung wala yung unang-una solidarity, unity, at saka teamwork. Eh, yung unity, eh, we are here together as friends. No? Unity yan. Yung solidarity is unity on the basis of commonly shared values. Yun naman teamwork. Yung may action yan. Kailangan pumuntos tayo eh. Yan. But Mr. President... Now, you tell me, where did, I, where, where did I not deliver? Okay, you did deliver. <laughs> okay. Let me get around it, Mr. President. Oh, yeah. Can there be unity? Can there be solidarity? Yeah. Can there be reconciliation? with people who were so identified with the Marcos dictatorship that any solidarity with them is only possible if they have confessed to their sins and they have restored whatever they stole okay, from Okay, let's look at that again, Apo. Teddy, no? <laughs> you look at our senatorial ticket, no? Uh, sino bang naging crony dyan nung nakaraan na Pangulo, si Mr. Marcos? Sino? Eh, mahirap po magsalita. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Baka ako malibelo. Hindi, hindi. Okay, let me tell you another thing, no? Ito, hindi nagawa na kahit na sinong administrasyon. Mm. But this administration went after the so-called behest loans. Mm. 400 of them, including the government officials who uh, facilitated these loans. Nung araw, eh, yun lamang recovery of the loans, eh. Ang uh, hinahabol. At saka yung filing cases against those who benefited. Pero dito sa administrasyon natin, hinahabol din natin yung mga pisales na pumirma-pirma dyan. Eh, please help, please facilitate. Because to me, they are liable now. One third of the 400, based on the findings of a fact-finding team that I assigned, led by PCGG, were found to have behest characteristics. What government, kung hindi ito, is filing cases for tax evasion? That's right, that's right. Okay, 23 billion na po ang nandi dyan. Maybe more. Ngayon, we have been temporarily stopped because of TROs issued by lower courts. But we are pursuing this. Pero wala pong big fish kayong nakuha? Sino bang big fish ang nakuha niyo sa tax evasion? Eh, nasa court nga eh. You want to know who are the ones we have filed cases against? Yeah, please. Lusutan is the biggest. Now, we have a list of so many others. We have also fired senior officials in this government. The regional like director of the biggest region in the BIR, Umali. Mm -hmm. I've also caused the early retirement of uh, 63 senior officers in the PNP. And uh, why early retirement? So the, we do not get involved in the hassle of, again, court litigation. Mm -hmm. Ito, eh, kinausap ko na lang sila. Kusan loob yan. No? Sir President, last question. <laughs> okay. Nakikita ko lang naman ng mga signals. Isa eh, bakit? Hindi ba tayo pagbibigyan ng sabi? Ewan ko, nasa kay Albert yun. Isa pa akong criticism uh, in your direction ay napaka-frequent daw ng inyong visits abroad. Okay, let's and look that, at that, Teddy. Uh, let's look at that. Your last visit was particularly lamentable because members okay. of your entourage now were shopping at the time that uh, floor contemplation was hanging by the rope. 
okay. in, in Singapore. Let's look at that because uh, again, this must be corrected. No? I went to six countries mm. in the space of uh, 12 days. No? I left on the 5th, I arrived on the 17th in Cebu late at night. Okay? Six countries po yan. Uh, ano ba mga major destinations? Unang-una yung uh, social development summit sa Copenhagen. Uh, I felt I had to lead that delegation. This was the pattern of that summit. 130 heads of government and mm. heads of state were there. Bukod po dyan, uh, the Philippines is now the current chairman of the group of 77 who are the developing countries. Actually, 130 countries na po yan eh. Bukod po dyan, the Philippines was the uh, host of the preliminary meeting previous to this one of the Asia-Pacific region. 54 countries po yan. And uh, I therefore had to play three roles as head of the Philippine delegation, as a spokesman for the group of 77, and also articulator of the concerns of Asia-Pacific. Uh, now, we also went through three Islamic countries. Ito po importante. Meron tayong OCWs lahat dyan. And they are uh, subject to a very very severe kind of Islamic law, as you well know. But in addition, we are also into this peace process with the Moro National Liberation Front, with the OIC, the Organization of Islamic Conference, of which there are important members, uh, is providing a very strong helping hand. Ano po yan? Uh, first, Turkey, and then Iran, and then uh, United uh, Arab Emirates. In fact, I visited UAE twice. One a little longer going there, one stop over coming back. Now, pinag-usapan din namin yung anti-terrorism mm -hmm. at saka anti-secession. Yung tatlong bansa na yan, Islamic, are very much against terrorism. Believe it or not. And also against secession because problema nila yung secession eh. Inside their borders. Now, yung sinasabing shopping, ano, we were one hour for, if you willing, in uh, Dubai. We were received by the chief protocol of uh, the Sultan of Dubai. It was very nice. He entertained us in the VIP lounge. And then he said, the duty-free shop is just below here. Would you care to go? Mm -hmm. I ko naman, I'll go down because I want to talk to the Filipinos there. I see. Mm -hmm. I had only one hour there. In Abu Dhabi, uh, when we passed through, that's the same country, but when we passed through on the way to Europe, I had about 18 hours, so we had a fairly nice meeting, very positive meeting with the OCWs. Mm. Now, eh, dito naman sa Dubai, eh, sana tanungin doon sa mga Dubai authorities at saka yung manager ng Dubai Duty Free Shop, who is uh, from UAE. At pinigyan pa ako ng plaque. Eh. Sabi nila, <laughs> Mr. President, uh, we'd like you to have this because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you represent these people, the majority of whom are uh, hard hands here, Filipinos. They're doing such a good job. Yan po ang mensahe para sa atin lahat. Hindi yung nag-shopping si Presidente, nag-shopping yung kanyang kasama. Eh, yun na nga ang mga malin report na umaabot sa ating publiko. Kaya nagkakaroon ng emotion at saka outrage kumisan eh. Eh, sana eh, gawing... Tama naman o balanse yun. Wala pa ako ang signal na kuko na isa rin ako. Kaya meron pa akong isang ah, question. Okay, okay, okay. Maaari makakatanong pa si Kwan, si Sige Nelson. Lang, okay lang. Uh, Mr. President, if you had to go back yeah. to the starting line and you could do things all over again and you had the wisdom of insight and the wisdom of knowing where you did right and where did you do wrong, would you change some of the decisions that you have made? Would you go in a different direction? Would you say that there are things that you should not have done and that there are things that you should have done? Of course. Uh, one is not 100% uh, infallible, you know? Oh. Unless uh, you are the group no, or you are the state, you know? Eh, Siyempre naman eh, along the way, nagkamali tayo uh -huh. ng eh. But uh, as far as those five major programs that I mentioned, uh -huh. that has stood the test of time. So I will go along with that, including our peace process, which is the basic condition that uh, we must put in place. Yung, yung social cohesion, uh, better stability and um, security uh, are the basic conditions for the other programs. Otherwise, nothing will happen. Ngayon, if there are more investors here, if there are more tourists here, if there are more uh, tradesmen here, coming from other countries. And now we are seeing Europe 
teaming up with us in Asia and oh. the Pacific, using the Philippines as the gateway dahil sa we have common, not only economic, but also cultural and political ties with them. Where would you say the US? Then, uh -huh. then uh, let's continue on this track. Uh -huh. But we will correct the mistakes that uh, can mistakes be considered na? tactical, no? Ano uh, yun? Yung strategic and policy. Uh -huh. Sa palagay ko, we have been on the right track all along. Eh, siguro, it's a mistake ko. I should be appearing more frequently on this program. <laughs> Dahil sa, <laughs> eh, mukhang uh, kulang tayo ng dialogue <laughs> at saka interaction. Kulang ng dialogue at interaction. <laughs> Oo, oh, eh, kaya nga, I'm sure we could have uh, clarified many things well beforehand, you see. <laughs> si Er, <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> Gusto pumasok kanina pa yan. <laughs> Marami po, pero kailangan isang show na ang ating gagawin. Ang concern ko lang po, Mr. President, is that sa nangyayari ngayon dito sa, sa bayan, alam nyo, uh, alam po ninyo na presidents are made and unmade by crisis. Nandiyan si Nixon, na Watergate siya. Pero nandiyan naman si Abraham Lincoln na uh, uh, he triumphed over the, the civil war and, and healed the, the wounds of the nation. So I'm sure that ang, ang, kwan, ang hopes ng mga tao doon is that makakalampas tayo dito sa floor contemplation crisis. Pero hindi po tayo makaka, makalampas kung... Meron po talagang feeling. I, I, I don't think I'm just making it up or just it's just the opposition or the New People's Army and all those who are interested in bringing you down or embarrassing you. But there is, believe me, Mr. President, a very genuine feeling among our people that the government has been remiss over the OCW issue. Sila po ang nagbibigay ng pera sa ating bayan eh. Kanyan. Mas malaki kisa foreign investment billion po. 1 to 2 billion dollars. Yeah. Last year po, according to Banco Central, mm. ang, dinala ng, ang, ang dinala dito eh, wala pang 1 billion dollars ang foreign investment. 22.05 pesos. Ang pinasok po ng OCW, uh, at, OCW at least 3 billion uh, dollars. Malaki po. Ang katunungan katunungan lang po bakit tayo masyado tayong makwan sa foreign investor hindi ko sinasabing hindi natin pabigyan ng foreign investor pero sa at, mga mahihirap na nagco-contribute sa bayan natin hindi natin binigyan ng protection okay. yun lang po uh, ito Nelson ano uh, ang mahirap sa ating kuminsan ano mm. pardon me for saying this it's either black or white no eh ay, hindi naman ganyan sa reality it's a combination of all of this eh at kung ating napagsama-sama yan Yun na nga, kung tayo ay nagluluto ng donut o bibingka, mm -hmm. o bibingka na lang kasi walang butas sa eh, gitna yan, ano? <laughs> we mix up so many ingredients and you have to cook it properly for it to come out as bibingka. Otherwise, it will come out as uh, eh, burnt toast, you know? Mm -hmm. eh, kaya may apoy dito sa ilalim, magagaling sa tao yan, sa mga mamamayan, mga maralita pa, at dito na sa itas. Hindi yung puro diktasyon o... Mm -hmm. Diktadurya na lamang. Pero, policy direction, and the policy must be there before you can give direction about it. Yun na nga sinasabi ko. Resource allocation, at saka international linkages. Eh, yan po ang trabaho ko. Yung international linkages, eh, that is the reason why I am industrious in going around to uh, sell the Philippines. Because other heads of government and other heads of state are also busy going around. Mr. President, I think you have made a lot of points tonight, very empathic and certainly very elaborate. So, there is another one. Kasi, go ahead, go ahead. Yung, yung question eh. Oh. Yung uh, sana ang panawagan ko sa lahat. Ano, oh. eh, Hindi nga, bibigyan nga ako kayo ng one or two minutes. Okay. Eh. Oh, anyway, anyway. You will have one or two minutes for a closing na, statement. Umpisan ko na ng konti oh. dahil sa disaster oh. with poverty. Ano. Oh. Eh, kung tayo ay nagsasama-sama at uh, skilled and productive. In other words, uh, hindi yung eh, gawa lang ng gawa, pero hindi naman na ibibenta, no? Uh, at saka ikatlo, kung tayo ay nagiging uh, attractive dahil sa may confidence ang tao sa atin, kahit na sila ay mga estranjero. Pero ang pinakamahalaga para sa akin ay yung confidence ng uh, ating mga mamamayang Pilipino sa ating pamalaan. Eh, I have no uh, doubt that we will triumph over this crisis. Hindi ko ini-small itong crisis na ito. Eh, you know, almost every day we have to attend to something like this, big or small. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the biggest. And why should I be the one to minimize it or not give it uh, special emphasis? Mm -hmm. That's my daily bread in this office. Dahil ako po ang Pangulo. And I have to do uh, something substantial according to my best efforts. And I do this not only all by myself, but I also try to get the Philippine team out there. 
to be as efficient and as effective as possible. Yan na po. President, uh, you have made your point clear, very loud and clear, and I'm sure the audience of Pangeline has heard you very, very well. Salamat po. And so, let me and Nelson and myself thank you for your goodness in terms of appearing on Pyong Line tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank, thank you, sir. Teddy. Uh, I salamat hope you will invite me to your program oh, yeah. again. And, uh, thank <laughs> you, Nelson. At uh, salamat din ako sa Channel 7 dahil sa Opo. ang aking uh, laging sinasabi sa wakas ng mga programang ganito as well as during my uh, personal appearances uh, before our countrymen in the provinces and anywhere else including those abroad that the Philippines now is at the verge of making it 